This is DeliveranceMinistry.fm videocast number 45. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another episode of DeliveranceMinistry.fm, where we give you proven insights about the demonic realm and deliverance ministry with some Christian counseling things thrown in as well, Woo-hoo. so you can wage spiritual warfare more effectively. That woohoo that you heard come from <laughs> my ever present colleague and friend here and uh, podcast partner, Dr. Phyllis Tarbox. Hey, Good Dad. to have you here. And uh, we are happy to continue on in our ongoing series of topics that we come up with, um, sometimes on our own, sometimes in response to inputs, that uh, just to try to train and teach people and uh, give you our perspective on on things in the realm of, of the demonic realm of spiritual warfare mm-hmm. and deliverance ministry. So today I'm going to um, address a topic that's kind of in the, it's a very biblical topic because in the Bible, you know, certainly the New Testament talks a lot about this, but it really has implications for uh, spiritual warfare and preparation for deliverance. And that's this notion of forgiveness. Mm-hmm. We've talked about forgiveness before and the importance of it mm-hmm. in terms of closing the door from demonic torment. But we're going to look at a scripture and, and talk in a little more depth today on this notion of forgiveness from the heart. Right. What does that mean? And the reason we're going to talk about it, because I really believe it has real uh, significant uh, implications for how well we can walk and continue on our journey with the Lord. If we understand forgiveness well, if we know what that looks like. And so we're just going to try to add to your understanding today about that, about what it means, forgiveness from the heart. Because as we'll see, in one of the scriptures, Jesus really makes a point about this whole notion of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So um, as I say, we touched on this in other topics. We talked about the importance of forgiveness for in terms of getting ready for deliverance and taking the away the spirit's legal rights to torment us. But uh, let's begin right from the get-go. Fellas, just have you go over this. Um, how? What do we teach? What do we share with people? What's our view on forgiveness? What What is to mean to forgive and what what is that well we 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 discuss it that it's it's a it's a choice that you make to release the debt of whatever it is that person has done to you where you where you just drop it and it it isn't based on your emotions it's based on your free will because you want to close that door you want to be free and frankly it's quite selfish so it doesn't really have much to do with the other person it has everything to do with you of course it's for your benefit it's for your benefit when you forgive you're forgiven and if you don't forgive you're not forgiven so you know we we want to make it really clear as we go through this that you can't rely on emotions as the basis for that because why they're in your soulish realm and that's where the enemy is going to try to torment you and he's going to try to manipulate those emotions in fact if you've ever stopped and you've listened to how the enemy will use your emotions against you you're going to quickly be able to discern that that he'll use things like self-pity and he'll say things to you immediately like that's not fair i shouldn't have been treated that way and we'll ascribe to the fact that that's probably pretty correct you shouldn't have been treated many of the ways you've been treated but with the minute you allow that self-pity to come on you i believe that's where you know that's where the enemy starts to get that inroad because self-pity will glue all the other spirits write to you with bitterness and resentment and anger that, that, that come in with an open door of unforgiveness. So that's, that's, that's my take on it. Is that good? Well, I think that's good. I yeah. think we, cause, and, and we focus you know, as a, as a, I guess as a society, there's a lot, a huge focus today on, on emotions, right? Mm. You just, if you do this, you'll be happy. If you buy this, we want, you know, in a entitled life, entitled life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mm-hmm. And look at it, you know, we get we get focused on the emotions and we lose, uh, you know, is that rather the be all and the end all. But I think, you know, that we teach and we would understand that our emotions generally is a result of, of what we are thinking, right? right? And, and it starts with the thought life. And, we'll, and, and I think we'll, we'll come back to that. Yeah, but, back. but but the notion is that, yes, our emotions, we can't, uh, we can't trust them. No. We can't trust our emotions Mm -hmm. because the devils are able to manipulate and put thoughts in our mind. We can get thoughts from a variety of points. We we focus on that. 
And once we start going down that road uh, and people whose lives are led by their emotions, usually it's a train wreck mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. not, a, not a good, not a good place to, not a good place to go. Well, you, and you know what, you're going to talk about um, Matthew 18, 22 through 35, but in that scripture, it does talk about a, a jail cell and that, that spiritual jail cell, I'm going to jump ahead of you a little bit. Is, well, no, go ahead. Just uh, that, that's where we're going to. Okay. Why don't you just go ahead and tell, share that, relate that parable because it's oh, okay. an important part of this teaching. Yeah. Okay. Well, in Matthew 18, 20, 22 through 35 it's the parable of the unmerciful servant and it's jesus talking and i think it's interesting because he's talking to peter and you know peter never got it right he was always he was always having to be corrected one way or another so when jesus asked him how many times do you think you should forgive and he threw out the number seven it's always kind of made me wonder where he came up with that number now hebraically seven means perfection and completion but it was very far from jewish law back in the day jewish law was three times and then they ripped the sleeve and they were done with you my jewish friends tell me three times and you're out right so jesus saw the look on his face when he said no you know you have to forgive 70 times seven i'm sure peter had had this perplexed look on his face and that's where my pastor says that's where when the boys had that look Jesus would go into a parable because he called the parables milk to help them understand and he and he and he went about it and I'm gonna paraphrase it greatly but it's all in red in the Bible and it's Jesus speaking and he said my father was like the king of a kingdom and he had all of these uh, servants that owed him vast sums of money. And there was one that, let's say, owed him the most. And for the purposes of today, let's just say that was like $39 trillion. I have to keep up in that money dollar thing with all this. Yeah, that's almost real money. These big dollars that are being thrown around with our budget anymore. So anyway, $39 trillion. Let's just say that's an unpayable debt because I don't know how to get much higher than that. And he told this man, he said, it's due. That money is due. And of course, we know in the scripture, the servant looked at the king and said, I don't have it. Please forgive me. And the king basically said to him, well, if you don't have it, I'm going to have to liquidate you. And in today's times, that would be, I'm going to have to take your 401k, your houses, your cars, your kids, everything you own and throw you into debtor's prison, liquidate you down completely. And the balance that is due, if you don't have it, then you're going off to beggar's prison, which never made much sense to me, but that's where they would send him if they didn't have the money. So he went off to beggar's prison and, and, and of course the king, and he started to beg, please, 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 please forgive me. And the king said, hmm. And he pondered it for a minute. And he goes, you know what? I'm going to let you go. So he let this this man go. And, you know, if you can think about it, I mean, I was explaining it to a a, a little uh, boy last week. I said, it would be like if you if your mother said that you could have the guitar at the beginning of summer and all you had to do was save your allowance up all summer long. And at the end of summer, I was going to collect that allowance. And at the end of summer came and you didn't have it. And she said, now I'm not only taking the guitar, but I'm also going to take and put you on house arrest for the whole school year. And this kid was mortified and by office. And I said, and then all of a sudden she changed her mind and said, no, I'll let you have the guitar and you can do whatever you want. He said, well, I'd be full of joy. And I said, well, just like this guy in scripture, he ran outside, was so happy and so excited until he saw somebody that owed him some money. And he went over and he hung the guy, basically. The guy didn't have the money. He begged and he asked for forgiveness. And this man had no grace for him. And he had him hauled right off to beggar's prison. And there was enough people in the courtroom that had seen this was the man that got free, the big debt. So they whined to the king. The king brought him back in. And this is where I think it gets interesting as far as deliverance ministry goes. Because in the King James Version, it says the king called him a wicked servant. And he said to him, shouldn't you have forgiven your fellow man just as I forgave you? And with that, the king delivered him to the torturers. Yeah, king's a picture, of course, of God, the mm-hmm. father with us, right? right? That's what that, Jesus is telling that parable. Right. And then, then he looked at Jesus and then Jesus looked straight at Peter and said, this is how my heavenly father will treat each one of you unless you forgive with your whole heart. That's the phrase that we're familiar with, and it's a well-known parable, and, and uh, you shared it very eloquently, very different, you know, kind of modern-day spin on it, and uh, people understand that parable. They've heard it, and it's talked about and preached in churches about how we need to forgive people and how we're forgiven in great debt. And then they look at that scripture where Jesus says, you must forgive your brother from your heart. Mm-hmm. Now, the reality is, I think, uh, most times, in, for certainly it's true, and I think in the church and certainly in the world, when people hear the word heart, they think right away of their emotions. Yep. My heart, you know, I was saying, my heart is broken. You mm. broke my heart. 
It doesn't mean, well, you broke my thoughts, you broke my mind. It's like, no, I'm shattered emotionally. Somebody's heart is broken. Mm -hmm. It's emotions. It speaks to their Mm -hmm. emotions. And we typically point and put our hand on that, right over that organ in the middle of our body that pumps blood, right? That's what we think about with the heart. And somehow we ascribe all sorts of um, characteristics to the heart. I mean that I think just aren't there biblically. I mean, our heart is, is essential. Praise God. We have one. Mm-hmm. It pumps the blood. Mm-hmm. And, but you know, to get a real, I think the most accurate sense of what Jesus was talking about, you know, we go back to the, we go to the scriptures and we're And if you look at the word heart in from the Greek, the original text, it's the Greek word. It's cardia, K A R D I A. Now you can, you take a little stretch there and say, well, over years that becomes cardio or cardia and heart. Okay, that's where it comes from. The Strong's number 2588 for those of you who are out there who are keeping score on these kind of things. <laughs> you can look it up on your own. Now, here's the thing. and Here's what I want to read. When the word cardia basically means, and more or less quoting here, it says the effective, A-F-F-E-C-T-I-V-E, the effective center of our being and the capacity of moral preference. And then quotes, volitional desire and choice. Mm, that's good. That's what cardia means. So what that says is, and and we're, you know, we're quite happy to say this, this supports, the scripture supports what we teach on deliverance. That deliverance is not based on how you feel. It's a choice. It's a choice. It is a choice. And so that's the most important things. We get hung up on the heart part and say, well, maybe I don't feel, and we get people, you know, we've had people in here for counseling and mm. I, we have, and people go round and oh, round. Yeah. I've forgiven, I've tried to, but I still feel when mm-hmm. I see them or I mm-hmm. hear their name, I'm, I'm upset or I'm angry. Mm-hmm. And then they, then it's kind of like being on that roller coaster. They make the full circle of, well, gosh, if I'm still hurt, upset or angry, maybe I haven't forgiven that right. person. And they go round and round. Right. And, you know, and the devils will chase you. They'll push you on that roller coaster as long as you want to go. It's like that hamster treadmill. Never stops. <laughs> exactly. It, it will never stop. At some point, you got to say, no, I'm getting off. Yeah. I'm getting off this roller coaster. And I think if you get a hold of this scripture, what Jesus was talking about, you can get off. Mm-hmm. Because it says... The, it's the, 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 the capacity of moral preference, mm-hmm. volitional desire or choice. So the question is, are you willing to make a choice to forgive somebody? Mm-hmm. And if you are, like when you do it, it's done. Mm-hmm. And you did mention P- Peter talking to Jesus and, and or Jesus really talking to Peter and says, you must you know forgive your brother mm-hmm. seven times or no, 70 times seven, which basically is walking in forgiveness. And that has a whole realm of things too about having proper boundaries. And mm-hmm. yes, we can forgive somebody, but we don't keep letting them throw us under the bus. Right. But the, the, the notion is, it all comes back to however you get there is that, you know, we get off the roller coaster by saying forgiveness is a choice. When we do it, it's done. And mm-hmm. for people in our past that aren't part of our life, that's something okay. We just need to accept that. When we do it, it's done. And mm-hmm. then being able to take those thoughts captive quickly, mm-hmm dealing with them with the um and and getting things on the things of god so our emotions will fall in line with what we're thinking obviously that's important and i think that's what it comes down to after we capture those thoughts we got to think the right thoughts right and paul he has a great scripture in philippians 4 8 and he, he makes it very clear about what we're supposed to be thinking of he says finally brothers and sisters whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then he talks about, and tied in within Second Corinthians ten five, we need to take every thought captive right. to the obedience of Christ. Right. So that's what forgiveness can do for us. We choose to do it. It's done. We can get off the merry go uh, round mm-hmm. of wondering if we've forgiven based on our emotions. So, and then the other element, which I think you know, we'll have you want to, want to we'll share an instance here that part of an element of forgiveness is we're going to choose not to dwell right. on what happened, forgetting what is behind. Right. Paul says we're not going to consciously now when the memories come up, we deal with them, mm-hmm. but things can go badly mm-hmm. if we consciously keep a list of wrongs. Right. Right. Yeah, I had a client that did that. She told me she came in with a whole list. I mean, she had lots of lists, and she would write down every offense. And ascribe it to that person. And, you know, this is one of the ones we've talked about before that she struggled with strong spirits of bitterness that came in and overtook her because of keeping that door open. And when we took her through deliverance, which 
uh, for her was miraculous. She was healed from chronic debilitating pain the very next day. She went to get out of bed and was expecting the pain to hit her the minute her feet hit the floor and she had nothing and she still has had nothing. And it all came from releasing that, that laundry list of, of bitterness, which was assigned through unforgiveness and, and, and walking free. And so, yeah, I think it does. And, you know, and we were talking about that, that, for unforgiveness is is that jail cell in that scripture. It's a clear picture of that jail cell. Now, in the Old Testament, they had real jail cells. But in the New Testament, everything is in the spirit. And so when you think about, are, am I in a jail cell of unforgiveness? Think about how your thoughts are running. Because when we pray, it runs real closely with our with our stronghold of jealousy. So if you, if you know, and someone offends you and the first thing that hits you is like, you know, impatience and then bitterness and then resentment and frustration and then blaming and anger. Well, you know what? That's a jail cell because you're living with that person right there in that room with you living, scrawling, sprawling all over the luxury penthouse in your brain while they're taking up all that room and you're frustrated and you're upset. And that is a spiritual, that is a spiritual jail cell. And the minute you feel that starting, I shouldn't have been treated this way. This is wrong. And you start getting that bitterness and the resentment. You've got to recognize that those are demons <laughs> and they're, they're, they're looking for a home. And if you're going to open up that door, they're going to come in and they're going to roost right there with you. And they're going to stay because you know, you can carry that, that, that whole jail cell around with you for a good part of your life. And some of that's, and we've talked about this in other podcasts about different temperaments. That different right. temperaments, their minds are different. Some people have a mind of melancholy, and mm -hmm. for instance, have a mind that doesn't shut shut off and will tendency to relive the past. And there's mm -hmm. other people, and I don't I think it's just a function of, of their temperament. It does nothing, not as much many times just necessarily where they are in their walk with the Lord, but they just they don't dwell on things. Right. It just happens it's like proverbial water off a duck's back. So. Mm -hmm. You know, but if you have one of those minds that doesn't shut off and you're thinking all the time, oh yeah, man alive. That's, that's why the it can be like a runaway freight train, and that's why the importance of, like you say, taking those thoughts captive quickly, as quickly mm -hmm. as possible, mm -hmm. and um, and just recognizing and and, and for the, coming back to you no, know, I have chosen, I have mm -hmm. forgiven that person. Mm -hmm. Yes. We might need healing and mm -hmm. we, you know, we get deliverance from any bitterness or anger. And yes, we might need healing afterwards. We have other sessions that talk about that, about emotional healing, how to, how to secure that. But, but truthfully it starts with it. No, I've forgiven that person. That was, you can't go there. Yes, he did that to me or she did that to me, but I've forgiven them. Mm -hmm. I've released judgments against them. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's important. Well, one of the things I share with our clients when they come in too is if you're one of those people that constantly brings the past into your arguments, that's a really good sign that there is a great level of unforgiveness that's still operational in your life because you, you're dragging the past up into the present. And when you do that, you give the enemy a legal right to come in and just stomp right into your living room. So even though you're, you're trying to get out from underneath it, you're trying to make progress, when you drag the past up, you drag up a lot of demons with it and that they come and sit right there with your living in the living room with you so you have to be really careful about that and and you mentioned different temperaments i think too because a lot of a lot of temperaments are like you said are very forgiving and they don't have a problem they can release anybody everything and they but you know what those temperaments they struggle with self-unforgiveness they are constantly self-condemning self-belittling you know they've got spirits that come in and try to bring that in so i think you know it's it and sometimes that's the hardest person to forgive, yeah. right? People struggle with that. Well, I can forgive others, but man, I can't forgive myself. And it's like you're you're putting yourself in the same jail cell. Mm -hmm. I, well, I remember that. I think that was the big lesson that the Lord taught me when I went through deliverance the first time. I, I wrote the names down on my forgiveness sheet, like teeny weeny tiny, like six point font, because I didn't want to have a novel of people that I had to forgive when I got ready to destroy my homework. So I laid it all out on the gas grill. I had pages and pages, probably hundreds of names. And I, I lit it all on fire and, and everything burned except for one name and the whole group. And I talk about this a lot with my clients, but the only name that didn't burn was mine. And I thought that was like a huge, huge, it just sat there on that one rung on the gas grill. All, everything else burnt all the way around it, this little tiny half an inch name, which was mine. And that ministered to me because I'm somebody that can forgive. But because of what I did as a believer, 
uh, and how how I used to roll in corporate America, I, I was mortified when I woke up with the Holy Spirit. And and if I'd have stayed under that place of self condemnation, I would have been worthy of no good ministry later on in life or anything the Lord wanted me to do. And you know we've we've had to take whole pastoral groups through that before we even pray deliverance. You know, I remember one release to source seminar. We had mostly pastors and teachers that had come in to check us out when we first started. And the Holy Spirit had me stop and take them through a proclamation of self forgiveness before we even went. And there wasn't a dry eye in that place because they were all thinking about all the lost sheep and who they didn't get to and how they'd blown the, and you know, the, the, the un, self unforgiveness is, is, uh, is a pretty high stack. So, you know, it says in Romans eight, one, there is no condemnation in Jesus Christ. So that condemnation needs to stop for others and it needs to stop for self. It does. And the, and the starting point is the understanding, I believe, this what the biblical teaching is on forgiveness. And coming back to the point, it is, I choose to forgive. It. Yes. And when I do it, it's done. It's done. I don't need to do it every day. I don't need to wake up. I don't need, you know, I don't believe, well, I need God's help to forgive. I seen, It's like, God's laid it out there pretty clearly. You either forgive or you don't. If you choose to forgive, when you do it, it's done. And you just got to keep reminding yourself and the demonic realm when mm-hmm. they try to come back. No, I have done that. And yes, we purpose to take thoughts captive. We're going to proactively choose to think whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, or admirable. Think on the positive things. Mm-hmm. Declare those things. Mm-hmm. It's not just feel good, you know, pop psychology. It's a biblical mandate. Mm-hmm. It, and it's a reason for it. Mm-hmm. We get our thoughts in line and think on the positive things and things of God, then our emotions come in behind that. And mm-hmm. so I guess that's the thing I'd like to leave, you know, the listeners with on this is, gosh, you know, yes, forgiveness is vital. It's important. But forgiveness in the heart has nothing to do with your emotions. It really doesn't. If we can't get off, you know, you got to get off of that dime and say, no, I forgive him. I've choose to, chose to forgive them. And like I say, we might, we might, that, that can be a precursor and to, to going through deliverance yeah. and then we might need healing, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. afterwards it's like, okay, but it's like, no, I've done it. And we walk in forgiveness like right. we talked about with people and, and maybe needing proper boundaries to help maintain that. But it's mm-hmm. like, no, um, we do it. It's done. And at that point you're off that, you're off that merry-go-round Yeah, yeah. and you can move ahead. Yep. Now the one thing too, I just wanted to mention before we leave is forgiveness in and of itself does not mean that the demons associated with that offense are just necessarily going to leave. And, and, and if you're, if you are in a battle where you're saying, I've tried this, I've tried this, but I've just still, you know, then, then you need to forgive. And then you need to come in for deliverance to get the demons that were associated with that trauma or that offense or whatever happened removed because they're there. They're not just going to leave. That's an important point. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily automatically leave. Sometimes they need to get kicked out. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that's such an important point. They just think that, that's, well, I've done that. I've forgiven them. Why do I still feel that? Well, maybe you still have those spirits of yeah, anger, those, spirits those that bitterness are, yeah. there. Maybe they're still, but I forgive. Well, okay. Maybe you have, you know, right, and but forgiveness maybe you're is released, a deliverance. <laughs> right. Maybe you, maybe you need, maybe, well, you're still talking about it. Maybe you're judging them still. Yeah, maybe yeah. Well, I for, oh, I'm talking badly, but well, then you're judging them. Well, mm-hmm. that's another opener. Oh, that yeah. will keep you in We could bondage. do a whole podcast on judgment. Yeah. Sure. So there's this result. Well, that's such a good point. Yeah. It's just. You know, deliverance is obviously part of the ministry, present day ministry of, of Christ. He gave it to the church. And so uh, I think I think that's such that's such an important point you make. Well, good. We hope this was helpful to you. It's uh, maybe changing your view and, and giving you a different insight on forgiveness and give yourself grace to kind of walk this out. Mm-hmm. Because if you've been used to living out of your emotions and doing everything based on that, you know, it's it may take a while to... Yeah. To, to get you know walking firmly on this new path but but just give it a go um uh, you know just do that and just, just see what how god will honor that um appreciate it if you would get on itunes you can subscribe to us there um of course we're on our ambcounseling.com website but you can subscribe to our station on itunes it's deliverance ministry.fm all the podcasts are there um we also have a resource library on our websites we get access to all a lot of our, our podcasts like this um other podcasts we do on articles slide shares videos youtube we've got a big presence on youtube 
And so you can, uh, our channel there is A&B Counseling, but uh, you can also see those on our website and I encourage you to do that. Sign up for those resources. They're free. And of course, in addition, we have our, our paid resources, our deliverance training and Christian counseling degree programs that you can see there. And, and then also take a look at our Warrior Partners page. Many people say, well, how can I help you? I believe in what you're doing. Well, if you want to help support this ministry in a very tangible financial way, become a Warrior Partner. One-time giving or monthly giving. It just will happen automatically uh, through our secure um, linkage there. We use the funds to help support people and provide scholarships for people who need deliverance ministry. Plus, we invest in the ministry. It takes resources to develop um, the training, the uh, videos, all the things it takes, times and skills. We have to pay and help people to do that. So um, that would be very helpful as the Lord leads to become a warrior partner. So with that, we will conclude this episode. Please keep in touch with us. Let us know about other topics that you'd like to see and uh, subscribe. And and we'll we'll send you out notices on on when we have new materials and, and new podcasts coming out. So thank you for listening, everybody. God bless you.